Hello, and welcome to the Folklore and Fiction Podcast. My name is Kelly McCaff Morin. I'm a PhD candidate in the Folklore Department at Memorial University of Newfoundland, and I'm also a speculative fiction writer under the pseudonym C.S. McCaff. The Folklore and Fiction Podcast and Dispatch synthesize these passions with a focus on folklore scholarship aimed at storytellers. You'll find the Folklore and Fiction archive along with the rest of my work online at folkloreandfiction.com. Interested listeners will find a link to the current dispatch in the show notes, where a more comprehensive record of this episode can be found, including a bibliography and other references. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast was first published as a newsletter in February 2020. I'm recording it as a supplemental podcast now so that new listeners and subscribers have an opportunity to engage with the material. In it, I'm discussing superstitions with help from scholars Ulo Volk, Torin Selberg, Alan Dundas, and others. Discussing superstition in the context of Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series of books, and providing you with an exercise on the topic. Folkloristic Discussion of Superstition Folklore scholarship of superstition tends to proceed along two lines of inquiry. The first of these addresses an embedded power imbalance in everyday usage of the term to describe religious and supernatural beliefs. Ulo Valk explains this imbalance quite well when he writes that, quote, the concept is still used as a rhetorical device of normative thinking that establishes boundaries between the so-called normal in-group and deviant out-group, the latter with its allegedly weird beliefs and habits. Superstitions are beliefs that are usually ascribed to the others, who are viewed as lacking proper education and rational thinking and tend to be socially marginalized, end quote. Torin Selberg unpacks the ways this sort of bias plays out in discussions about New Age and neo-pagan adherents, who are often labeled superstitious because of their tendency to construct beliefs and practices by borrowing from various folkloric, historical, and religious sources. Selberg writes that, quote, This tendency to use religious ideas freely, so to speak, is often discussed in critical interpretations of New Age philosophy in terms of their genuineness or spuriousness. This view implies that a religious tradition is coherent, that the scriptures, religious ideas, and rituals together constitute a wholeness, and that if elements are separated, they lose their authenticity, end quote. I like to think of these opinions about belief as three vectors of unidirectional movement. There's movement from inside to outside, where an in-group holds a negative view of an out-group's beliefs and labels them superstitions. Then there's movement from more people to fewer people, where a majority group exercises narrative power over a minority group by doing the same. Finally, there is movement from the old and stable to the new and dynamic, where the longevity and coherence of a belief mark it as either authentic or superstitious. In all cases, people do not usually label their own beliefs superstitions. Rather, they apply this label to the beliefs of others. With that in mind, Folklorists don't use the word in a derogatory way at all. Instead, we study the elements of culture and play around beliefs of all kinds and the opinions people hold about them. The second line of inquiry endeavors to define superstition without resorting to a discussion of opinions about belief. Alan Dundas does this when he writes that, quote, superstitions are traditional expressions of one or more conditions and one or more results with some of the conditions, signs, and the other's causes, end quote. Let's unpack that definition a bit, shall we? Superstitions are traditional expressions. This means the beliefs that comprise them have their roots in culture. These traditional expressions have one or more conditions and one or more results, which are often phrased in if-then constructions. For example, if you wish upon a star, then your dream will come true. Finally, some of the conditions expressed in a superstition are signs, like seeing a ring around the moon as an indicator of rain, while others are causes, like walking under a ladder as a reason for bad luck. This definition brings us closer to the idea of superstition as a belief that the natural and This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast is a preview, and you can listen to the full episode on the Folklore and Fiction website. 
Just click on the dispatch link in the show notes or go to folkloreandfiction.com and sign up for a free account. Thanks very much for your interest. Copyright 2019 to 2023. Kelly S. McCath Morin. All rights reserved unless Creative Commons licensing is specifically applied.